Okay, today I am documenting uh, repair of the Teramite T2 swing assembly. The swing from left to right goes through the rear of the machine with like a six inch piece or much bigger, probably ten inch piece of angle iron welded to the back vertically. And these two pieces, one fits in the bottom and one fits in the top, and this pin goes between the two and has the swing assembly on it. And it got really loose one day. Now, the reason it got really loose, as you can see, I've got wire holding them together. And if I remove the wire, you'll see that it kind of just falls apart. Oops, well, there it goes a couple pieces. And I'll take this off. So that piece comes off. These pieces on top come off. So it's it's it rattles around pretty good um, and they're pretty worn anyway I think they rattled around in the angle iron uh, case even when they didn't break and there goes the other one and you notice the top so one sits one sits up like upright like this and the other one sits on the bottom probably 10 inches apart like this. So the problem with these is that they're cast. The machine's 40 years old, they no longer make these parts. So I decided I would make this up out of steel instead. And these pieces, this is a half inch piece right here, and then this is two and a half. So you have a three inch piece that you need to make and the short sides are you know about six inches they're they're uh, somewheres around there um, so what I decided is I took a piece of steel that someone gave me a half inch plate and here it is and I used it as a jigsaw puzzle, put it all back together and cut all these pieces so I needed for five inches of the small plates I need ten plates so there's two four six Seven, eight, nine, ten. And for those top plates, which are oversized, I need two. So those are the plates. So that's what I've got for steel so far. And I've stripped all the paint off of these. Um, and on one side of this, which is where I'm going to bolt them together, the the paint that was used was uh, difficult. I ended up using a rotary needler inside a, a a drill hand drill to clean them. It kept plugging up my disc grinder. It plugged up the belt sanders. Just too much crud. And to cut these. I started by using four and a half inch grinder with a with a cutoff wheel, and that was okay until you get about halfway through the steel, and then you couldn't keep it straight enough. Um, tried sawzall, tried jigsaw. I finally ended up using my seven inch band saw, and to make the odd pieces, I actually put this in the vise here put the pieces on top and then uh, used my clamps to hold it at the angle I wanted and cut. So that's the raw stuff. All the big cuttings done. 
the next step is to get these all exactly the right size and matched up to a model that actually fits inside this this fits inside the angle iron on the back of the machine so I can use this to cut them all exactly the right size in the milling machine so that's that's the next step oh that's probably not going to look good on, on changing changing angles uh, using the milling machine to set them all the same size so now I've got my five pieces cut which makes two and a half inches and for this demonstration I guess ignore the holes because those actually come after I do the first fitting so I've got the five pieces and what I did is I set up a block inside two and a half inches down so that I could stack these and make sure they all fit on top of another so we will stack all these That was one, two, three, ignore the short piece, I just decided to save some metal, four, five. Now, once I put those in there, initially it was, oh my, um, so how do I drill a hole? So I had stacked all those with double-sided tape and pressed them all down so that they would stay aligned when I went to actually drill them. I then took them on the drill press and drilled a quarter inch hole through them all the way down. Something had shifted and you can see that it has some movement anyway so that when I put a bolt back through them it was a little too tight. Since I am going to use 3 8 bolts anyway I will now at this point drill 3 8 holes in it while it's in place and uh, see how good we do. Alright so that's what you'll see next and uh, then, then we're on to drilling the one inch hole for the main shaft. The final way that I decided to drill the inch and a quarter hole is to stack all the plates, stick them in a four jaw chuck, and mark where the hole's got to be and drill it. Putting it on the drill press and using double sided tape was really a pain in the neck, but this way here seems to work really well. Okay, so there's the piece with a one inch hole. That's the biggest I can do because, of course, that's my biggest drill. So what do you do? You pull the tailstock back, get it out of the way, and stick on a boring bar attachment. And start, set that up, and uh, lock that down, and use the boring bar to go from the inch to the inch and a quarter. So that's what we'll do next. Okay, so we may have skipped a few steps here, but uh, we're done. And uh, we'll do the recap. These are the two pieces that came out. You can see that it broke a big chunk out. And uh, both of them are pretty much the same. They've, they've lost quite a bit there. It turns out that they broke right at the grease fitting. And the cast itself is pretty worn. These things rattle around pretty good. So what we've done is we've taken and built two new ones. We've stacked up half inch plate 
and there's the grease fitting. We did not weld them. We bolted them together with 3 8 bolts. There's, you know, the pressure is going to be all lateral, so they should be okay. And the, uh, the end was ground to fit the angle iron on the back of the machine. The oversized plate will hold them in place, and it's a resting area. The one inch hole, which on the second one I bored completely on the lathe, which worked really good. I uh, should have thought that thought about that earlier. So that's what we've got. Now it's time to put it all together.